I remember in elementary school learning that Jefferson uh, really didn't like slavery and that he wanted to, you know, and I had like grown out of that, like by yeah. high school probably, but it wasn't until you had me read like notes on the state of Virginia where I find like, he actually proposed that um, uh, the punishment for laws broken by black people, sh whereas for white people, it would be hard labor black people, their punishment should be to be sent back to Africa. He right. was like in favor of like mass deportation, basically. Um, mm. he, uh, he also makes an argument in his notes on Virginia that uh, slavery in America was uh, benevolent in a sense in comparison to slavery uh, in history. And mm. David Walker, uh, sort of counters that by like developing, I think, the idea of a, an epistemology of ignorance, sort of like 200 years before Charles Mills writes, where he says that the, in no other society in history are the enslaved people considered less than human. And that's specific to Black people. Um, and then, like you were saying, um, during slavery, there was the civilizing narrative. We had talked about in um, class about how. Um, after emancipation, that narrative switched to like criminality and uh, like like narratives of sexual violence. Can you talk about that switch and like the legacy of that new uh, epistemology? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So, so like you alluded to, I mean, Jefferson was really the catalyst for a lot of this discourse, right? Um, <clears throat> and two, his fear of the Haitian Revolution was omnipresent on him. You know, and so like we're talking about, right? Like we started earlier when you were saying one of the things that American democracy and Western nations have always contended with is what to be done, what is to be done with these people who have been slaves, right? And, and so that is the debate in America and even Western democracies about exactly that. These people now we've captured, we've created genocide institutions, what should we do with them? Do we free them? Do we just keep exploiting them? And so you start to see like even moral philosophy is complicit in this, right? This is what we mean when we talk about the decadence of Western philosophy, because it is okay to exploit people if you keep them as slaves, but you know what, we'll feed them or maybe starve them, right? So you start to see that what happens in the age of discovery was this idea that if, if America is going to develop as a country, you're going to need black people, right? So the civilizing discourse is about the ontological existence of these people are actually born slaves, right? Like, so if we're, everything we're going to have to do here is to create a structure in which we constantly conceive of them as slaves. So you start to see the argument that uh, in Virginia, particularly, again, uh, right, creates the conditions in which if a child is born under the, uh, a Black woman who is enslaved, the child follows the condition of the mother, right? So you see that conversation. In the age of emancipation, that discourse becomes, if a child is born from, say, uh, a Black man, right, Black men were deemed as those who were more prone to be criminals. So what has to happen is to say, ontologically, Black men have the pro propensity to produce criminals. All right. Mm. So, so from the discourse in which in slavery, it was that black women who are enslaved ontologically then create enslaved people in the age of emancipation, it becomes black men are criminals who then have the ability to reproduce criminals. Mm. So what we start to see at the aegis of eugenics is this conversation about if society, society is going to be better, we need to cartel people who have this ability to be, do things like criminality, right? So you start to see lynchings happening, medical doctors are arguing about, is it sterilization, is it bisectomies that we need to perform? And these things have global consequences. In Africa, it's the same discourse. In Germany, it's the same discourse. Um, even today, right, when we think about mass incarceration, we see that the most incarcerated group tends to be Black men, right? So we've seen this discourse in different ways in which after emancipation, it's this idea, again, ontologically, there's something wrong with Black men that leads them to be criminals. So even in the shootings, we see this consistent narrative in which the criminal justice system is always having to signal and prime people to say, the reason we killed this person is because they did something criminal. And mm -hmm. for American society, you accept that because from reconstruction through our time, we have seen and conceived of black men as ontologically, these are naturally born criminals. 